Alright, so now we need to make an HTTP service to go out and grab our web page and get the data that's echoed to us from our PHP script. But first we can, uh, yeah, let's just go up to this debug button and Flash Builder is great. We can debug on our desktop or on a device and don't worry if you have an AT&T phone, uh, you can still push push these apps and debug through the USB so we'll just say on desktop debug and this populates our app we have our text input here and our button and that's all we need right now so we'll close out that debug session and let's go into design mode here and get us a different collar of our button so in design mode we can see collar and chrome is what the buttons are so we'll give it a nice red and we'll head back into source if you double click on this tab here it'll minimize and maximize and flash builder so it works for pretty much any tab so Alright, back to the HTTP service. Uh, any non visual components go in the FX declarations tag. So we'll start our HTTP service here, enter, and we need to give this an ID. So we'll get, we'll call it IP service. Uh, we need our URL, which is our URL to our PHP script. And on this, we need two uh, events. So we need a result event for when we get a successful result. And we need a fault event in case we get a fault. And we'll close this tag. And there's a little bug that I've been noticing. It keeps adding a new script block for each of these things. So we have to clean this up. So we need to take all our import functions, import commands here, and yeah, if I can type, paste them down here, and then these two, uh, the result function and the fault function. We need to combine all these into one script block and then we can go back through here and delete the rest of these so our code looks a lot cleaner so now if we look at this we have our get IP click handler for our button our IP service result and IP service fault so we'll code in our fault right now and um, if we have a problem if we're not connected to the internet or we can't reach the server we need this fault handler to display some text and we'll display in our IP display text input so we'll say IP display and then we want the text property of that text input box and quotes because this is a string say cannot get IP and end it with a semicolon so now what if we have a result so we need to show our result which is a basic echo uh, one line we don't have to worry about parsing or anything so we'll do id ip display dot text property equals and um, we want to use this event result so if you're not sure where our information comes from, I'll show you how to do this in debug. So first we need to make this HTTP service send. And so we'll call its name in this button, click handler, and we'll say send. So now that we have this, let's go over here on our service handler and we will double click in this uh, grayed out thing by the line numbers 
So we're on this bracket and that creates a breakpoint for our debugger. So let's debug this and we'll hit the button and if we have a good result it'll tell us uh, do you want to switch over to the debug perspective we'll hit yes and then this gives us our debug perspective on this result handler so over here we can see our variables we'll double click and our event variable of our result handler so basically we can see that we have event.result and that's given us our uh, data also we can do event the target and then there's a data function but we'll just use this event dot result to get what we need so we'll go here here's our stop button to stop the debugger and up in this top right corner we can see flash debug if we hit this arrow hit flash and we're back in our coding area so we'll take off that uncomment this and we want event dot result and because it's an object we need to cast this object as something and since uh, it's the text property we can say as string and we'll end that so it'll cast that event.result object as a string to the IP display.txt and that's it all we have to do is hit debug we'll test it out on our desktop get IP done gets our IP for us now like I said uh, we can test on the device so let me plug in my phone here and we will go back up to our debugger and hit debug configurations and we'll say on device and deploy over USB so now that I have my phone plugged in uh, and our debug we will hit debug and you can see I have it's all connected up I have the phone here and it takes a while to compile it we can see it's going into our debug and this is an AT&T phone where you can't sideload apps but we just did and we'll hit get IP gets our IP and uh, it's that easy to make your first Android app uh, with Adobe Air and Flex